Joining us now, Florida State Representative Michelle Rayner. She's co-sponsored the bill. Um, uh, Rep, thank you very much for joining us. Let me ask you this. I, I imagine there's not a whole lot that the Florida State Legislature agrees to um, in mass, both Republicans and Democrats. Why this issue? Listen, you know, um, first, Katie, thank you so much for having me. Hey, you're absolutely right. You know, I am a Democrat, and I was very clear yesterday, you know, there are no Republican children. There are no Democratic children. This is not a partisan issue. This is a policy issue. And I really want to say it's a matter of life and death. We have seen what has happened um, to our children with regard to social media. And this is a place where you see people from all sides, different spectrums of life, different walks of life, we are able to come together and agree that we have to act to protect our children. Something that, you know, um, that has not really happened um, at this level. Yeah, I mean, it's it can be difficult for parents to be the ones solely responsible for regulating social media, regulating mm -hmm. what kids can um, see online, what apps they can download. But Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida, is not so reportedly ready to sign this bill. Do you expect him to get on board? I know that changes were made in the Senate um, to the bill. Do you know what those changes are? And, and do you think that's going to sway him? So, you know, the changes that were made in the Senate was really also to encompass um, language that protects children from online pornography. And here's the deal. You know, uh, Governor DeSantis, I think that it's clear that he and I agree on very little. Um, however, he says that he agrees that we need to protect children from social media. And if that is actually his intent and that's actually what he agrees to, then he should have no problem signing this bill. Um, I know that he has uh, constitutional concerns. I wonder where some of those concerns were when he removed Andrew Warren and Monique Corwell, but that's another conversation. But uh, this bill can wholly stand up to constitutional muster. And at the end of the day, it is incumbent upon us as lawmakers to act. So so if um, the governor says that he cares about children, he cares about families, I ask him to put his money where his mouth is and sign this bill. Let me, I want to ask you about the constitutional muster and why you think it'll work when other bills like this have um, not won in court. Let me ask you, though, specifically, when you're talking about why this is necessary, what have you seen out there? What have you experienced out there with kids and social media that leads you and, and other lawmakers in the Florida State Legislature to believe that the way to solve this is not to leave it in the hands of the parents, but instead to legislate on it? Well, Kate, I think that's a great question. A couple of things. You know, my um, co-prime sponsor, uh, one of them, I have two Republicans, uh, Representative Tyler Soroy and Representative uh, Fiona McFarland. Um, Representative Soroy, he talks about how he went into a coffee shop. No one knew who he was. And he said, hey, you know, was talking to a young girl uh, that was checking him out and said, hey, you know, the Florida legislature is thinking about banning uh, social media for kids under 16. What do you think about it? And the young girl says to him without hesitation, I think it's a great idea. I wish that would have happened when I was a kid. Maybe I could have enjoyed my childhood. So not only have we seen, uh, you know, bullying, we have seen trafficking, we have seen self-harm, we have seen uh, children being exposed to things that they should not be exposed to, all while social media companies know what they are doing. There have been documents, uh, discovery that's been given over and lawsuits that show that they know what they're doing. Executives being very clear that they don't even allow their own children. And so here's the thing that I think this makes our bill able to um, survive any constitutional uh, issue. One, it is not about content. It is not about what you access on social media. It's literally about the design, addictive uh, design mechanisms, whether it's infinite scroll, whether it's push notifications, whether it is uh, you know, editing images. So that is what it's about. So it's narrowly tailored to that. And the other thing is, is that we've read and watched what's happened in other states when they've tried to uh, initiate bans. And one of the things, court in Ohio struck Ohio's uh, a ban down because they said if social media is so bad, why are you even allowing parents to have the decision to even be able to access it for our, our, their children? And what we believe is that social media is a poison pill. It is a vice. And you wouldn't ask a parent to go sign a consent form for their 13 year old to drink alcohol. So why would we ask parents to sign a consent form for their child to get on something that is proven time and time and again that is harmful to them?
You know, I'm just looking at this um, stat from U.S. News and World Report. They're citing that between 2008 and 2018, the suicide rate among 13 and 14-year-olds nationwide more than doubled from roughly two deaths per 100,000 teens in 2008 to five deaths per 100,000 teens a decade later. And that does coincide quite strongly with the advent of the iPhone and then the rollout of social media over the years after that. The iPhone came out in 2007. Um, in terms of standing up to constitutional scrutiny, as I mentioned before, other cases that have tried to ban social media have failed in court on First Amendment grounds. Why do you think this is different? You know, Katie, as I said, our bill is not about content. It's about a business model that these companies employ, a business model that is built on keeping children addicted. So whether it's infinite scroll, whether it is image editing, whether it is push notifications, any things of that, of that sort, that is what our bill is narrowly tailored for. It is not about what content is on these websites. We understand, I'm a lawyer, you cannot moderate the content that are that's on this website what we can't say is that we know these things to be uh, a problem we know these things to be addictive we know that this is your business model this is your business model because it's in documents that you do this to engage children you do this to keep children on the platform so if this is the business model that you choose to employ then you may want to rethink about doing business in Florida addictive. but there's other you, yeah go go ahead go, go ahead. ahead no go ahead but there's there's other websites such as Trevor Space that you know someone who I, I identify as queer that Trevor Space is wonderful because it doesn't use this it doesn't use addictive design so if you don't have addictive feature addictive designs algorithms that are pushing harmful content you're more more than welcome for your your child to make the decision for your child to access that what we're saying is that this business model. We won't allow that to happen in the state of Florida. Addictive features, not the content. Addictive features on these uh, sites. Correct. Um, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. Um, state Rep. Michelle Rayner, we, we appreciate your time and, and good luck out there.